Okay, so like a lot of you out there, I was watching the YouTube live streaming of Richard Branson, first billionaire in space, and something just didn't seem right. So I was watch watching it here, and um, first of all, Steph Stephen Colbert came along, and he was doing a bit of commentary, and I was thinking, this is, this is just a bit weird. This is It's almost like a Hollywood sort of fake thing. It wasn't like all the NASA ones, which, which are very, very informative and a lot of technical information. And it was just a bit weird, and then uh, Veronica came on here, and uh, let's see what she had to say. If you're just now tuning in, my name is Veronica McGowan. I'm a structures operations engineer here at Virgin Whatever Galactic. That means. <laughs> Alongside me is astronaut Chris Hadfield and yeah. future astronaut Kelly Girardi. So great to have you guys here. So, this is when I got a bit sus. It's like, yeah, Chris Hadfield. We all know Chris Hadfield. He's, he's just brilliant. Canadian astronaut. Uh, been on the space station, many missions. And, uh, but Kelly, who's this Kelly? Kelly Girardi. So, uh, let's see, I'll just move, move me around a bit here. So there's Kelly, there's Kelly there on the left. I was thinking, she, she looks more like a social media influence. She's got, she's got a little, a little top on of, you know, the planets and everything. And it's like, to me, she seems like, like maybe a, a preschool teacher or something. Maybe, maybe we've got a preschool teacher Pretty cool teacher um, going on here. Whoops, what have we got here? There we go. So, um, had a bit of a dig around, and because uh, I still thought something's not right. You know, when something's not right, I, I dig. I basically dig around and see what's going on. So, I was looking at her socials, and on Instagram here, she's got a little Instagram. And uh, it's like, just, just even a bio multi hyphenate spacewoman, mum to TikTok star, Delta Universe. Not necessary rocket science in stores now. She, so she writes a book. It's got a little book going, and it's, it just just didn't seem right. And I was thinking, what's the, what's her background? Like every little thing's it's more it's more sort of social media than actual astronaut material. This <laughs> she's talk every little post has got like um, she's in a space suit. Yeah, she looks like she's flexing there in a space suit. It's got here. You can, this can be you. It'll be you. It will be you. My journey to space started at uh, I double I A S N L C. That's the, the people who are sponsoring her. When I joined their Project Possum program, a suborbital citizen science course whose curriculum includes an introduction to aeronomy and applied aer astronautics. Blah blah blah. So she's not she's not trained by NASA. And just every post, she seems to be flexing about how she thinks she's an astronaut. <laughs> and my gut's telling me she ain't no astronaut. She ain't no astronaut. But I'm telling you, it, it gets worse than this. So I was looking on Twitter and uh, came across a post. And she actually named named her child, her daughter, Delta V. And you know, anyone that's got a semblance of high school mathematics and physics in their in their blood will know that delta v is like change of velocity no, she's flexing there with uh stephen hawking that, uh, that's that's pretty impressive she's flexing with stephen hawking there so here we go delta v i see a little badge there delta v what's this bormrook whatever that means so she named her kid delta v and at that point i was thinking oh no 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 do not name your kid delta v you know it sounds cute when she's a little kid Oh my, what's your kid's name? Delta V, she's going to be an astronaut. It's like, but I'm telling you, she goes to school, and her name's Delta V. The first time that the high school teacher talks about acceleration, which is Delta V over Delta T, um, she's going to get a lot of flack. She's, there's going to be sniggers every time the teachers talk about Delta V. It's just not, it's just not good, man. What are you doing? That's child abuse. I'm telling you. Do not name your kid Delta V. Where is this post there? I saw it at one point. So every every post is about her astronaut training. So she's been on the she's been on the vomit comet they call it. You know the zero G, Boeing seven two seven. Um, that's about the only training I think she's really done. I'd, probably because I don't want her to throw up all over the experiments. <laughs> but um, in, very I found it very interesting. Uh, they. Talk about Delta V here. No, 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 no. Must have been a while ago. Must have been a while. She posts so much. You know, oh God, this is just four hours ago. She's posting every few minutes. No wonder I can't find it. I'm not even going to bother looking for it. She, yeah, she she named a kid Delta V. 
<laughs> and I actually replied to it. I said, I give that name a score of <laughs> I squared, which uh, anyone that knows mathematics, I is the square root of negative one. It's an imaginary number. So if you square negative one, uh, square, if you square the square root of negative one, you get negative one. So it's a score I gave her for uh, for her um, calling a kid down. Uh, so that's her child there. Called her child Delta V. So anyway, I started looking into because it just got more interesting. The more I, the more I dug, the more interesting. Got this guy. This is this guy was a social media influencer, surely. And so I had a look at this uh, this article here from New York Post. And lo and behold, they said, "Meet Kelly Girardi, the influencer heading to space with Richard Branson." <laughs> and that's pretty much sealed it. She's a social media influencer. Probably, probably a good. Uh, marketing ploy, I guess. Uh, just get a social media influencer to to uh, get on your program. But what what really doesn't sit well with me is like, okay, just just call yourself a social media influencer. Don't pretend to be an astronaut. <laughs> Every photo she's she's dressed <laughs> she's dressed up in astronaut costumes. Every single post. Oh my god! There you go. <laughs> so, don't don't say don't say she got married. It says when Girardi wed husband Stephen, seen here at the Explorers Club dinner, astronaut Scott Kelly sent a video toast from space. So she's uh, using the she's using the influence of Richard Branson to get some uh, well known names on her side here. It says a little Delta V. There we go. Girardi will carry a good luck reminder of daughter Delta V into space. <laughs> Uh, it's just so cringe, man. I thought, I thought, I thought I went to the height of cringiness when Natalie Barr was interviewing Mike Tyson. I'll leave a link over there, whoop, over that side. Uh, if you haven't seen that interview, that is just so cringe. But this takes the cake. Now, apparently, she was born in uh, Jupiter, Florida. So that <laughs> piqued her interest in. Uh, so this part's good. She was born in Jupiter, Florida, and she used to watch the space shuttles and that take off. So that, that's pretty cool. And you'd think that that would make her want to become, like, you know, into the science fields and everything, but she actually got a liberal arts degree instead. So here's some of her posts. So is, is this on is this on Insta? Oh God, these bloody pop-ups are driving me nuts. So she's always, she's always in a little space suit or surrounded by space memorabilia. <laughs> a Christian, <laughs> she's got a bloody Christian jaw, uh, space, space type theme bag, is it? Oh no. Oh, no, everything's a rocket in the background, she's got a little space suit on, a little space outfit with stars and sprinkles and f I'm surprised it's not a rainbow, I think there are little moons on her in that one, come on, come on this, this is, it's, turn, it's turning, it's turning astronauts into a joke really, come on, come on Kelly, don't post this stuff. Just, just post like a normal, like the Richard Branson space outfit. Just, just post that. You know, this is just taking the Mickey out of astronauts and NASA. So, um, I had a look on. So they did an interview on it here, and this is when I found out she was a liberal arts degree. So it just says here. Let's, let's zoom in a bit. So, uh, <clears throat> here we go. So it just says here. Uh, this is her speaking. My career in the commercial space flight industry first launched in 2012. I unfortunately only discovered I love space after college. Well, hang on a minute. And another another point, she says that she lived at Jupiter, Florida, and was watching the uh, space shuttles take on off, take off all the time. So, don't know. Yeah, she's just full of it. So, unfortunately, I discovered I love space after college and armed with a liberal arts degree. You know what I think happened? She probably liked space, but she couldn't She couldn't make the credentials, man. You've got to be, you be full on credentials to be an astronaut. And I actually was on the NASA site, and they actually tell you what you need. So, so what does it take to be an astronaut here? There you go, well, down here. And it uh, tells you straight away. Needs to be a U.S. citizen, possess a master's degree in a STEM field, not a liberal arts degree field, a STEM field, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, including engineering, biological science, physical science, computer science, or mathematics from an accredited institution, have at least two years of related professional experience 
obtained after degree completion or have at least 1,000 hours pilot in command time on jet aircraft. It's not like a co-pilot, you need to be a full-on pilot, 1,000 hours minimum. Be able to pass the NASA, NASA long duration flight astronaut physical. I'm telling you, it takes years. It really, it just takes years. It takes years to be a proper astronaut. I, I'm, it just doesn't sit well for me that this woman's <laughs> posing as an astronaut and you ain't no astronaut. Even Richard Branson, technically, he's not really an astronaut. Uh, he just passes. I think I went to 88 kilometres. There's a there's a line. What's it called? I think it's called the Cardman line. Uh, let's, I'll just Google that uh, line of space. Is it Cardman? Is the Cardman line? Is it? Uh, da 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 da. Oh, sorry about that. No, it's called. There is a, there is a specific line. I know it's at 100 kilometres. Now, for example, the uh, International Space Station, it's roughly, I think it's 492 kilometers um, orbit. So, yeah, they're, they're, just, they're just at the border of space there at 88, 88 kilometers. So, so there we go. So, so she's saying here, I grew up in Jupiter, Florida, very on brand. I remember my northeast bedroom window. So she contradicts herself there. So she goes, I remember my northeast bedroom window perfectly framed a stretch of sky over Cape Canaveral. I saw a lot of space shuttle flights from that window. From a young age, you can say I had front row seats to the final frontier. I understood that people were living and working in space, but it took me a lot longer to realise I could be part of that. So she says that, but earlier she says that, um, well, later, where is it? Do, do, do. Oh, is, is this a different interview? Actually, it could be a different interview. That's probably why. Uh, is it this one? Getting mixed up now, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, so one 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 interview she's saying that uh, she only got into uh, space, you know, interest in space after after college, and then she's saying she grew up watching the space shuttle. This doesn't make sense, does it, guys? It's not nothing about this makes sense at all. But um, I'm glad they had Chris Hadfield. At least they had Chris Hadfield there. At least they had Commander Chris Hadfield. Uh, she, he sort of saved the show. Like, the one in the middle I called a Kardashian. <laughs> so I've got two Kardashians and a proper astronaut on the, on the end there. It's just, it's just so cringe, man. You should watch it. I'll leave all the links. Let's watch a little bit more. Here we go. Earlier today, we saw Richard and his crew make their way down to the astronaut walkway at Spaceport America, seeing their families off before they were... So there we go. Just wear that. That's just, that's just the suit you're going to be wearing. You ain't got, you ain't got no proper astronaut suit. To our space flight There's system Richard Branson for final inspections and prep. Just get one of those. Get one of those suits. Put it on your Insta. That's that's all you're getting. <laughs> that's all you're getting. You ain't getting no proper astronaut suit. But um, let's, let's have a look. There was Stephen Colbert. He. Oh, here we go. Stephen Colbert actually was in the live feed. I was like, no. Space itself more accessible and approachable. Well, maybe that's what it was. Maybe they're just trying to make it a little bit more commercial. But hey, there's two hundred fifty thousand dollars a ticket. I'm not going to be buying a ticket. Maybe that's why they put a social influencer there. They maybe they they're the only ones that can afford uh, these tickets. Because uh, regular Joe Blow, he's not going to be able to afford no ticket to space. They should have uh, they should have put like a uh, a flat earther up there. I reckon. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can find. Is there a bit where? You can see the curvature of the Earth. They're up high enough, but you can go. You can go up in like a mig. I think it's a mig twenty nine. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I'm just going to look this up. Mig twenty nine uh, edge of space. You can do this in Russia. You can go on a mig twenty nine. Um, oh, here we go. Mig mig flug. Fly mig twenty nine fighter jet to the edge of space. So, uh, incredible adventures. This is way this like this is what I'd I'd be aiming for if I had half decent money because I think this is only about fifteen thousand euro or something. It's still expensive, but you, you get the uh, you get the experience there, and you won't be you won't be uh, surrounded by liberal arts uh, graduates either. You'd be uh, have a nice uh, Russian professional pilot at this front there. Um, doo -doo -doo. Does it have the price? Extreme events. 
anyway, it's not it's not 250 grand. I can tell you, it ain't 250 grand. Edge of space, Russian pilots, the planes, what it's like, sample itinerary, frequently asked questions. It's got to be surely you got the price there. Surely they've got the price. Can I change the itinerary? How long are the flights? Can I bring a camera? What clothing do I need? Da da da. Probably a lot safer as well. Um, it's not. It's not. It's definitely not two hundred and fifty grand. I know because I was looking and I was going, hmm, hmm. I might be able to do this in my lifetime. Um, let's put MiG twenty nine. Edge of space. Flight cost. Mm-hmm. Flight, supersonic flight, large jet ride, depending on the weather conditions. Here we go, flight prices, here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut Richard Branson's lunch here. <laughs> that looks way cooler. That looks way cooler than your bloody Virgin Galactic. Um well they did have the price thing. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't know they have the prices. It's got flight and prices here. Ah, uh, you got a book. Oh, here we go. Seventeen and a half thousand euro for a fifty-minute flight. Yeah, anyway, edge of space flights from seventeen and a half. Man, you could split. You get you could get like fifteen flights for the price of one Virgin Galactic. There you go. You get you get the uh, edge of space experience there. Ninety-nine percent is good, I say, because I don't think Richard Branson is going to be up on every flight. In Virgin Galactic, so uh, there we go. So I think I'll I think I'll leave it there as a positive because it's been a pretty negative video. It's just, uh, just it was just irking me, man. I just could not let it go. I was going, should I make this video? I was like, no, it's just it's just not right. She thinks she's an astronaut. You're not an astronaut, Kelly. You're <laughs> Kelly's done a few little things like the vomit comet, maybe in the centrifuge to see if you can handle the G's. That's about it. You're not piloting the thing. You're not an astronaut. <laughs> You're not a pilot. You're not an astronaut. You're a social media influencer. Although I've never heard you before, so you haven't really influenced me in the past. But we've heard about you now, haven't we? We've heard about you now. And there's a little Delta V. Poor little Delta V. Oh, no. She's going to sue Mummy when she gets harassed by her fellow students for being called Delta V. Delta V over Delta T. Over and out. <laughs> oh no. Why did you name your kid Delta V? It's half clever, you know, it's Delta Victoria, her name. Delta V. But they're gonna call it Delta V. <laughs> they're gonna call the poor kid Delta V. Oh I'm just imagining it. you know what it's like at school, man. Kids will just jump on anything and it'll spread like wildfire. It'll spread faster than than a new variant of COVID, I'm telling you. Once they find out her name is Delta V, they're gonna jump all over it, man. I know kids. Kids don't change. <laughs> kids are gonna be kids. Kids are gonna be kids. Hopefully she can change her name before before she goes to school. <laughs> it's just so cringe. No. I just don't like this. Just leave, leave, leave it up to the NASA astronauts to do this stuff. They should have had Buzz Aldrin. They should have had Buzz Aldrin and and Chris Hadfield. And, you know, probably have to keep Del, uh, Kim Kardashian in the middle there. But um, <laughs> it just was. It just seems it, the whole thing was so cringe. I'll leave the links to the uh, to the actual live stream so you can have a listen yourself. I I just couldn't listen to it. It was just so, like, her voice was just so annoying. There you go. So stick around for that. Stick around for that. <laughs> they were trying to get Richard. They were trying I don't know about you all, but I'm still feeling overwhelmed and uh, excited about what we just witnessed. And there's one person in particular who's got to be having all. Uh, no, I just, I seriously, God, I can't listen to it. I like, I like the NASA, like, Houston. <laughs> <laughs> I like the NASA commentary. Okay, where well, she's going past t twenty-one, what is it, twenty-two, two hundred and ten thousand feet now. I just like that. I don't like this. I don't like this business. Like the landing was pretty cool. I had like a little skate on the front. 
Must admit, I, I did like that. So you get the little two. Actually, it looks like a three. Look like a skate to start with, but it looks a like touchdown. it is actually a. And we're going to pull it just the, like this for a minute yeah, before bringing the, the nose down. Yeah, so little, the nose had actually. Can see they're already um, celebrating inside there. The nose had like a little and skate the nose on it. Nose is coming down now. Like a yeah. <laughs> nose gear touchdown. There we go. That was pretty cool. All right, so we'll leave it there. Go over to the go over to the MIG site. Go fly a MIG. See if you like it. You know, if you can afford two hundred fifty thousand for a uh, for a Virgin Galactic, you can afford seven and a half thousand euro for a uh, MIG twenty nine. That will get you in the mood. And uh, there we go. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you enjoyed that. I just had to get it off my chest. I really did. It just just didn't sit right to me. As soon as I saw her, and I was saying that she's, you know, a new astronaut. I think that girl is an astronaut. Like. You just know, <laughs> like you know, I've I've been in the engineering field. You just know when somebody has some sort of mathematical and engineering training and STEM field training. You know, we're not, we don't, we don't sort of, we don't talk like her. Anyway, that's enough of that. Head over to the MiG twenty nine site. Have a look at that. It's really cool. They got a video there as well. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll all save up and we'll all be able to see the curvature of Earth. I really think they missed an opportunity there. They should have sent the flat earther up. They should have sent the flat earther up. They should have had the most die-hard flat earther and sent them up there. But you know what they would have said? Oh, the windows are parabolic, man. That's what's uh, curving the earth. It's uh, still flat. <laughs> I, I don't know how, how high you'd have to be to, to really, really see that it's a globe. <laughs> but um, anyway... The more people to go up, the more this flat earth thing's going to get debunked anyway. All right, guys, so you know the drill. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.